Angina, is chest pain or pressure sensation on the chest, that is most often caused by coronary artery atherosclerosis. This resulted not enough blood flow to the heart muscle. Chest discomfort tight, dull or heavy, retrosternal or left-sided. Angina pain often associated with exertion or emotional stress, and relieved within several minutes by rest. Exercise induced substernal chest pain lasting 30 seconds to 30 minutes. Other precipitating events include sexual intercourse, climbing stairs, eating a heavy meal, emotional stress and cold temperature. Often accompanied by shortness of breath, diaphoresis, numbness, and pain in the left inner arm, shoulder or jaw. Pain relief by resting or nitroglycerin. Some people present with atypical symptoms, including difficulty breathing, nausea or epigastric discomfort or burning. These atypical symptoms are more common in older people, women, and those with diabetes. Angina is most common in middle-aged and older men. Women are usually affected after menopause. Causes include Atherosclerotic coronary artery disease is the most common cause. Severity of stenosis is usually greater than 70%. Aortic valve stenosis or hypertension with concentric left ventricular hypertrophy. The O2 supply is not adequate for the thickened muscle wall. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Cocaine-induced coronary artery vasoconstriction. Inadequate coronary artery flow and response E during exercise or stress. Pathogenesis includes subendocardial ischemia caused by decreased coronary artery blood flow, spasm. Most common cause or a thick muscle wall, concentric hypertrophy. In other words angina is usually due to obstruction or spasm of the arteries that supply blood to the heart muscle. Diagnostic tests for angina pectoris include, resting electrocardiogram ECG. Stress test shows ST segment depression greater than 1 mm, stress echocardiography, ECHO, or stress testing with myocardial perfusion imaging. Computed tomography, CT, calcium scoring. Computed tomographic coronary angiography, CTCA, is a confirmatory test. Risk factors for angina Age, greater than or equal to 45 years for men, greater than or equal to 55 for women. Smoking Diabetes mellitus Dyslipidemia Family history of cardiovascular disease Hypertension Kidney disease Obesity, BMI greater than or equal to 30 kg slash M2. Physical inactivity. Prolonged psychosocial stress. If angina occurs at rest and lasting more than 10 minutes it is unstable angina. Typically it occurs with a crescendo pattern, i.e., distinctly more severe, prolonged, or frequent than before. Unstable angina requires urgent medical attention. The most specific medicine to treat angina is antianginal where nitroglycerin is a potent vasodilator that decreases myocardial oxygen demand by decreasing the heart's workload. Theta blockers and calcium channel blockers act to decrease the heart's workload, and thus its requirement for oxygen. Nitroglycerin should not be given if certain inhibitors such as sildenafil, tadalafil, or vardenafil have been taken within the previous 12 hours as the combination of the two could cause a serious drop in blood pressure. Exercise is also a very good long-term treatment for the angina, but only particular regimens, gentle and sustained exercise rather than intense short bursts, 38, probably working by complex mechanisms such as improving blood pressure and promoting coronary artery collateralization. Calcium channel blockers, such as nifedipine, adalot, and amlodipine, are vasodilators commonly used in chronic staple angina. A new therapeutic class, called if inhibitor, has recently been made available, a vibrodine provides heart rate reduction without affecting contractility leading to major anti-ischemic and anti-anginal efficacy. ACE inhibitors are also vasodilators with both symptomatic and prognostic benefit. Statins are the most frequently used lipid-slash-cholesterol modifiers, which probably also stabilize existing atheromatous plaque. Low-dose aspirin decreases the risk of heart attack in patients with chronic stable angina, and was part of standard treatment. However, in patients without established cardiovascular disease, the increase in hemorrhagic stroke and gastrointestinal bleeding offsets any benefits, and it is no longer advised unless the risk of myocardial infarction is very high. Treatments for angina are balloon angioplasty, 
in which the balloon is inserted at the end of a catheter and inflated to widen the arterial lumen. Stents to maintain the arterial widening are often used at the same time. Coronary bypass surgery involves bypassing constricted arteries with venous grafts. This is much more invasive than angioplasty.